Are we on good terms, Struddy, or what? Yeah, no, you know what? I, I, uh, an eye for an eye, right? So I last minute dropped you guys yesterday. I had nothing going on, but, you know, I just <laughs> had to make sure you guys knew that, you know, I, I won't be bothered. I forget who it was. It was like someone was sending like a rowboat canoe across Lake Ontario or something. <laughs> and uh, I was like, I can't believe I'm getting bumped for this guy. Yeah, we had oh, to go live, man. We had to was- go live. It Realistically, was it was Sheldon Keefe that we ended up getting. And, <laughs> right. and you got the right. gate because the, the Leafs coach found some time for us. That's what it was. <laughs> Strutty, that's if you would, that's, a, that's a good trade. If you and Noodles were in a bubble, and I know there's strict rules, but try to turn back the clock, would there be any text messages or any kind of calls regarding taking a peek? Or would you guys say we just cannot do it? <laughs> It's so funny, Daz. I on our show the other day. I was like, you know what? If I was in the bubble, I wouldn't fraternize with the other team. And then someone texts in, what about your buddy Noodles? I'm like, ah, oh, we might hook up to see what's up. You know, you know we got to go see. So, yeah, to answer your question, we'd be taking a peek, especially when you're single. You know, you'd be maybe looking I know, but you're supposed to stay in the bubble, Struddy. You would just say, well, screw I, it. I think I would have brought a, like a binocular glass or something. What is that? So you can look down and look outside the bubble and see what you're missing. You know, just so you can take a peek that way. I well, feel like I would have I would have worn like a beard and a mustache and put on like a, a service coat pretending I'm delivering food and I would go That's out. what I would do. I would have a whole room service get up and a hat and I would be I'd have a pickup truck in the parking lot and I would be out. So, you know what, guys? All middles had to do was wear a tank top. With that body, no one would have believed he plays in the NHL. <laughs> you know, <so> <laughs> Look at the arms on the bellboy. He yeah. must be leaving for the night. Yeah. This guy's fixed in the elevator for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, I don't think we're going to hear any stories, you know, over the next two months, but I wouldn't be shocked if something leaks in, like, a book in about 10 years yeah. that someone snuck out the and true, found their the way. True reality of the bubble yeah okay. someone just made their way out mission impossible style okay. okay maybe you can't get out but can you like do you can you get like if you needed to see a girl could you pull it off or no i don't think so man i don't think so you know what you guys I actually you know i knew you guys were having me on so i actually went for a little recon mission you know hard-hitting journalism i did a walk around it uh, the other day and seeing all the fences and stuff and there's there's a lot of police and security guards, and I don't, you know, I think it's just to kind of direct traffic around there. So I think it would be pretty tough. I mean, most NHL players kind of stick out; they're pretty athletic. You know, most of them are good looking. You know, there's a few Swedes that aren't that good looking, but for the most part, they're a pretty good looking group of guys. So it'd be hard to get out, I think, and sneak away. Well, especially McDavid, because now he's faster than ever before. Like if he now he oh. would be walking faster. I, I that's my assumption, uh, Strutty. That's what everyone in Edmonton. Break it down, Strutty. Everyone in Edmund, Edmonton's claiming McDavid's even faster yeah. four months after the the case. Can you explain that? Can you yeah. confirm or deny you that? Really good. I don't know if he's any faster, but I think that you know he had a pretty serious knee injury, and so he didn't have a chance to do his normal workouts. Um, so I think that, you know, uh, he, he was able, I'm sure he's got a gym in his basement. So all during this whole thing, he was able to work out and get his workouts in and kind of feel normal. You know, when you, when you miss a summer of working out or you have to do it where it's all rehab, you don't feel great. Um, you know, and he still had a pretty decent year last year. But, you know, I think that finally, you know, when you feel like you're 100% ready and you're now good to go on your, your, your that injury is behind you, whether it was a knee or a back or a shoulder or whatever, and now that extra four months to kind of get it ready, I think that he just feels really good. So I think he's excited. I mean, the idea of him getting faster is scary. Like, you saw the D-men from Calgary the other night. Like, they had the happiest feet. Every time they even got on the ice and started attacking, they're, you know, they're, they're, I, and I, I'm not laughing at them. I would have felt the same way. I would have right. been changing. I would have changed as soon as he came on the ice. So I didn't want to get embarrassed. I mean, Morgan Riley, I think he's a really, really good defenseman. He was, you know, it wasn't a, a flattering moment for him as a defenseman. So, you know, I think that it's it's they get the happy feet. So he's not the guy I'm worried about for this order series. I think he, he's going to be fine. You know, there's I think yeah, there's there's other guys I think that are that should be more worried about what they're contributing than old ninety seven. Right. Strutty, yeah, that's where I was going to go. Strud. To me, when you're looking at it, and I don't know if you'd agree or not, like I think it's going to all come down if they can get some saves. I mean, if, you know, and I don't know, are they leaning towards Koskinen? I mean, Smith has a lot of experience and he's a gamer. But Koskinen looked good the other night, and, and so did Smith. But I, I, he had a better season. Like, what, what, are, what are people saying in Edmonton about, you know, that goaltending tandem, and, and can they hold up? 
I had a feeling that um, it was going to be Mike Smith. It's just for whatever reason, Dave Tippett, it seems like that's, you know, his, his safety valve, right? Um, and so when Miko started the game, I, I was really surprised. And, and Miko played very well. And, and Mike, Mike Smith played well, uh, it, it, the same. But, you know, with that start, I, I just feel if you're going to start a guy, he's just starting goaltender on Saturday. So I think it's going to be Miko. Um, but you're right. I mean, they, they've got to beat Mark Crawford. Crawford, who's had a kind of a, a, a weird start to his restart, he, you know, he can't be the difference in this series at all. I think it's got to be the owners' goalies have to be equal to or better than Crawford, so that doesn't become a storyline. With Jason Strudwick, I, I'm curious how to project special teams around the league, and I, I think it especially applies, though, to a team like Edmonton who had such a massive turnaround. I mean, they were basically top five in the league in power play and penalty killing pretty much the whole season, so... You, you go from where they were a year ago and in years past to what Tippett has supplied them and, and to credit the players going out there and performing. I don't know if that continues. And, and again, this isn't exclusively about Edmonton. I wonder this throughout you know, all 24 teams. Just because he had a, a power play that was red hot in February, that doesn't mean it's red hot in August. So how, do, how, do you, how are you trying to project that, Struddy? What do you expect in terms of a carryover in special teams? Well, you know, I, I was I didn't get a lot of power play time and so I, I you know what I was really trying to look at this and try to figure out okay what what is harder to get back on track? The PP or the penalty killing? And you know, I can tell as a penalty killer, I felt that a lot of time it was all about the timing. You know, player X goes and then I go and if you know, if one guy goes and the other guys don't go, it's a real problem. So I think the timing issue is is, is there for the PK, the PP, I mean, you know, specifically to the winners, I watched that game the other day, and there's a lot of talent there, and that, that, that PP looked really dangerous. I mean, they were snapping around, especially early. Maybe Calgary wasn't quite awake yet. But there's so much talent there. I think that that can get going rather quickly. Um, for every team in the NHL, I think it's going to be the PK, the timing, um, you know, and, and, and to the point for the winners, Riley Shan, you know, he didn't play the other night. He's a huge part of that PK. Him and Josh Archibald usually lead it out. So who takes his spot? Is it Gaetan Haas? Or do you have to give dry side extra minutes, which isn't really something you want to do. He can do it, but you, you want to use him more for five-on-five five and power play time. So, you know, I think that overall, I think the PKs will be harder to get back on track for the timing issue. PK, Strutty, that's why you never played on the PP, because if you can't figure out how to box in one and get your stick in the lane, <laughs> how, you, how are you going to be able to think on a power play? Like, just hit the odd guy, cross-check in front of the net, box in one, stick in the lane, and get it out. How hard is that? Let's let's get real here. Well, we know what, it's even it's even something as easy, or not as easy, but it's challenging, like getting the right the right lane to, to take away a pass or to take away a shot. And, you know, we're talking about feet. You know, guys like you, old dog, you guys can find those seams, right? And you just, you wanted us, like, you'd look to the left, and I'd put my stick there, then you snap it over my, to the right side, and, and that's where you wanted to go the pass in the first place. So... You know, it's, it's just that, that feeling of doing it. I, I, I suppose there might be some of the PP, too. Like I said, I was never really on it, but I think there's more timing to the PK because you all have to really work together and in sync. And it's not so much skill, it's more thinking the game. Whereas PP, there is some thinking, but the skill can take over really, the, you know, the best players in the league. So how are you guys feeling out there? Represent uh, Western Canada, Strutty. You've, you've got four teams in the dance. Um, all four teams, I think, you know, have, have upside. I, I think Edmonton had the best season, clearly. I think Vancouver, they were going to get there through 82 if they played 82. Winnipeg had a tough year because of the transition defensively, but I think they clearly get the best goalie in Western Canada. Yeah. Um, and Calgary, I don't know what to make of Calgary. I'll be, I'll be honest, I don't feel great about Calgary. But of those four teams out west, um, how do you handicap the chances of at least a couple of them maybe getting through two or three rounds? Well, you know, I guess I'd sound like a homer, but I feel pretty comfortable for the Oilers for sure getting into the playoffs. And after that, I mean, who do they end up playing? But they, they have a lot of depth, you know, and, I, and I, I, it's the first time I'm, I'm able to say that without kind of, uh, you know, my fingers crossed. But there's, there's guys that can help. See who hasn't found his groove yet with this group. Can he find a game or two where he, he breaks out? Josh Archibald, I think, is, is, is a big part of what they're trying to do. Ethan Bear look really strong. Um, you know, their defense is mobile. It's healthy. It does hurt that Mike Green's not in there. He just adds a veteran. But, you know, I think he's, he's something that uh, will help. But they don't have – I don't think they have the goal team that we looked at maybe in Vancouver or in, um, in Winnipeg. And, to, you know, if, if 
if you start a best of five series and you get off to you're down one nothing, I looking at the other end, it's Markstrom or uh, Hellebuck. I think you get a little bit more nervous, and maybe if it's you know one of the guys in Calgary or due respect to the, the guys in Edmonton, just because there's question marks. They can do it, but there's question marks about it. So, you know, I, I guess if I was going to handy, I would say I think I feel pretty good about what I see with uh, with Edmonton, Winnipeg, and Vancouver. And I think for me, Calgary is a team that um, I, I don't think they have to worry about being away from home too long. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I like Winnipeg in that series, and I, I like Edmonton and Vancouver as well. I like the way they're built. I think they're they're set up with a pretty good matchup as well, where they're both favored. We'll see how they handle that pressure. But uh, get started this weekend. Uh, always great catching up with you, buddy. We'll do it again soon. Thank you for this. Yeah, let's try not to bump me anymore, eh, for a rowboat champion. <laughs> <laughs> Only a contest winner next time. That'll yeah. be the next yeah. <laughs> reason why you get bumped. Someone will win a contest. Sorry, Struddy.